In this video, we're going to look at epsilon delta proofs. And uh, since the course I'm teaching right now is AP Calculus, which doesn't really go into them, I'm going to look at them at a very shallow level, get the basic idea across, and I will show um, one proof worked all the way out. But if anyone wants more information or deeper or more difficult problems, more challenging problems, feel free to leave a comment. I can maybe uh, later on come back and fill in with uh, some of the other issues that can go on with these. But that said, let's dive right in. So in the last video, we saw a working definition for a limit, which was a little bit vague. It talked about getting closer and closer for x and getting closer and closer for y. And that's way too vague to do real mathematics um, on, get some good uh, results that we have confidence in. So let's revisit this and look again. We know that the notation is this limit as x approaches some value of f of x equals l. And what this means is um, for any epsilon greater than zero, there is a delta greater than zero such that if x is closer to this target A value than delta, then f of x will be closer to L than epsilon. So um, I sort of read through what's going on here. I'll notate this very briefly. So this just says that um, we are within delta of A, but not actually equal to A. We haven't actually hit this target value because for the limit, we don't care what happens at this target value. And this right here tells me that the output, the value, is within our epsilon of L. So our input would be within delta, and that's going to cause my output to be within epsilon. And the trick to it is, and I'll show one example to help explain what the heck's going on here, um, the trick to it is, no matter how small I make epsilon, so I said for any epsilon greater than zero, but we're really, uh, that's a terrible circle, we're really looking at small values for epsilon. I want to get as close as possible to my limiting value. No matter how small I make epsilon, I can find a delta here that will require that I'll be at least that close to epsilon. So let's see what's going on. Um, the first one is not a full-on proof. It's just to help us see uh, what's happening here. So the idea for this is um, we know the limit, limit as e to the x, um, limit of e to the x as x approaches 0 is 1. Okay, uh, whether we look at that graphically, so I could go to the calculator and graph e to the x. And over here we see that it approaches 1 from both sides. Or we can know that, um, if we already know that e to the x is continuous, you can use that rule, e to the 0 is 1. We haven't talked about that yet in our videos, but... Um, we could look at a table, so I could change this to ask for my independent variables and see what happens as I get closer and closer to zero. So I could try like negative one, and that's below zero, and I get point 
three, six, eight ish. I could try negative 0.1, which is closer to zero, and you see it's getting closer to one. And if I went really close, negative point zero 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 one, I'm really close to getting my output as one. And the same thing happens from the other side. So if I tried one, I'm above zero, one. I know I'm at e actually. Uh, if I tried 0.1, I'm going to get back the output close to 1 and 0 0.0001, getting really close to that. You can see, okay, we're really close to the 1. So I'm confident that this is the limit, but how can we use this to show it? So the idea is this. We consider the graph, and I have a function graph, so this is what e to the x looks like. And my target output value here is 1. I want to be within epsilon units of this 1, which means I want to be, let's see, somewhere between 0 0.9 and 1.1, my output value. So I want to be stuck somewhere in here. Okay, and we can see that there is this portion of the curve right here that is between those two output values. And so as long as my inputs now, let me find a different color, as long as my inputs are somewhere between here and here, every output, so x between whatever this is, whatever that is, we'll find those shortly, at my output of e to that power will be between 0 0.9 and 1.1. And I can do that graphically, so let me go to the calculator, and I can go back here, and I can actually graph the epsilon boundaries of 0.9 and 1.1, 0.9 being 0.1 less than 1, and 1.1 being 0.1 more than 1. The epsilon affects the output value, not the input value. And when I graph this, you'll see, okay, I only see one. Where's the other one? Well, the thing is, they're so close, it's hard to tell. So I could either zoom in and just zoom in a couple of times to see what's going on. So there's e to the x, there's 0 0.9, there's 1.1, and I could zoom in some more. Or I could have gone straight to messing with the windows because I know sort of the values that I care about. But here we can clearly see, okay. I want to be somewhere in here. And so what I can do graphically is I can just find those intersections. So second calc, intersect, and I want to intersect e to the x, first curve, with 0.9, the second curve. My guess is over here. And there I get negative 0.10536. So that was negative. 0 0.13506. I'll double check to make sure I didn't mess that up. No, I did mess that up. Okay, let me fix that. 10536. Much better. I'm not dyslexic, I swear. Um, and then I find this one up here. So same thing. Second calc. Intersect. And I want to intersect e to the x with, not e to the x, but with 1.1. And I'm going to go over to the guess. And I end up with 0 0.09531. Let's see, I can do that correctly, 09531. Okay, so these are the two x values. As long as x is somewhere between negative 0 0.10536 and 0 0.09531, then e to the x will be between 0 0.9 and 1.1. And that's the idea. So I want to come up with this bounce. Now the way I do these problems is I say, okay, the delta is how far I can move in the x direction. Epsilon is how far I moved in the y. Delta is how far I moved in the x. 
Um, so in this one, I'm trying to find the distance from zero. So this one, so I consider like two little deltas. Delta one is how far this is from zero. So zero minus negative 0 0.10536, which is 0 0.10536. And my other one's how far this is from my target x value, target x value is zero. So delta two is 0 0.09531 minus zero, which is 0 0.09531. Um, and so now we have to figure out, okay, what's the largest one that works? And here's the idea. I can go 0.1, or so to the left here and be within the bounds. But I can only go 0 0.09 or so to the right here. If I were to go this far to the right, I would be outside these bounds. I'd be too far, okay? And that would put me outside the epsilon bounds. So I don't consider this delta. That one's too big. I take the smaller of these two numbers and the largest delta that works is approximately 0, 0.0. 9, 5. I can go 0 0.095 in both directions. It doesn't matter that I'm a little bit short on this side because I'll still end up being within that epsilon bound. So that should get us a better idea of how this works. How do we prove a limit? And this is the idea. Basically, we need to Find a method to choose a delta that works for any epsilon greater than zero. And what that usually involves is doing a little bit of work on the side and then coming back. So our work on the side here was we graphed. I could have also said um, analytically that, okay, I want to figure out where these intersections are. I want to figure out, you know, one, sorry, 0 0.9 less than e to the x less than 1.1 and figure out where this works. And then I can use that knowledge to get there. So I could take the natural log of this, natural log of this, and I get the same thing. So let's look at a general problem and see how this works. So we're going to do some side work and then get a little proof. Once we already know the numerical value of the method we're going to get to choose delta. So this is a very simple problem. They get much more difficult. Um, but I'm going to leave it at this for this video. If you want more, leave a comment, let me know, or send a message or whatever. So I want to prove that the limit as x approaches 3 of 4x minus 5 equals 7. And so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do a little bit of side work. Say, okay, well, um, I want to consider any epsilon greater than zero. So what we end up having is we have sort of seven minus epsilon has to be um, less than four x minus five, which has to be less than seven plus epsilon. Okay, so in here, I'm just saying whatever my value from my output is, I want to make sure it's stuck between these two. And I can solve this, so I can say, all right, add five to both sides, so I get 12, minus epsilon is less than 4x is less than 12 plus epsilon. Divide everything by 4 and I'll get 3 minus epsilon over 4 is less than x is less than 3 plus epsilon over 4. So I'm stuck somewhere between here and basically I want to see how far x can be from 3. That's what I want to have happen. So um, in here, this one 
is epsilon over 4 from 3. It's epsilon over 4 below. This one's also epsilon over 4 from 3. So that means if I let delta equal epsilon over 4, regardless of the value that I have in there, it would stick me somewhere between these. So here's how I do the proof. So for any positive epsilon, we're going to let delta equal epsilon over 4. And this is going to mean that um, the distance from x, so 0 less than that, to 3 is less than epsilon over 4. And we're not going to actually consider x equal to 0. And from this part right here, this absolute value inequality, with a less than, I know it's going to be an and inequality. This means that, sorry. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. So this means that we know that epsilon over 4 is less than, sorry, negative epsilon over 4 is less than x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 4. And I can add 3 to all the sides and get 3 minus epsilon over 4 is less than x is less than 3 plus epsilon over 4. And now, so this says, okay, x is within epsilon over 4 of 3. That's good. I want to know what the output is. Well, this means that 4x, I can multiply everything by 4 because I want to try to make this into that. So 4x will be between 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times epsilon over 4 is epsilon, and 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times epsilon over 4 is also epsilon, and then I can subtract 5 from all of the sides, and I get 7 minus epsilon is less than 4x minus 5 is less than 7 plus epsilon, which means that if we let x equal epsilon over 4, then the value, so I'll call this f of x, but the distance from this to 7 has to be less than epsilon. And that was our um, exact rule for the proof. So I think the proof was um, this slide. We considered any epsilon greater than 0, and we found a delta such that if I made sure that x was within that many unit, delta units of the target, then this would be within epsilon units of the limit. And so, therefore, we know that the limit as x approaches 3 of 4x minus 5 must equal 7. All right. If you have questions, put them in the comments below. If you want more or better um, explanation of epsilon delta proofs, put that in the comments below. Say, you know, we need more, and I can go into some of the other things. This was a very easy case. Since this was linear, I knew that I could go sort of the um, reciprocal of this slope to the left and right and still have it work. All right.